Eric Hammer here, registered physiotherapist. Today I'd like to talk to you about progressions for deep neck flexor strengthening exercises. But before I begin, uh, please hit the subscribe button below so you'll be uh, notified with about any new videos. I do post educational videos on a fairly uh, frequent basis, so make sure to subscribe. Uh, so essentially the deep neck flexors, these are uh, very, very uh, deep muscles within the neck region. You can sort of think of them as the core muscles of the neck. So in a lot of cases, when somebody is suffering from persistent chronic neck tension or pain, in a lot of cases what's happening is more superficial muscles, right, are working overtime. Uh, so those could be your upper traps, for example, it could be your SCM or scaling. So these, these sort of superficial muscles in the front of the neck, in a lot of cases what will be happening is they'll be guarding or in this sort of tense position in order to compensate, right, for weaknesses in these deeper muscles in through the neck region. Uh, this is really common, by the way, after some form of trauma, for example. So if somebody's had maybe a car accident, whiplash, um, you'll also see it, as I mentioned, with uh, chronic neck pain. So in a lot of cases, uh, what's happened is a patient has developed certain motor programs or muscle memory uh, in which these very deep core muscles have become uh, inhibited. And so as a result of that, right, there's an overuse then of these uh, superficial muscles. Also, I find that individuals that have, uh, just generally speaking, a lot of hypermobility within the, uh, the neck region. And what I mean by that is the actual individual vertebrae and through the, the cervical spine, they move quite a bit, right? And so as a result of that, uh, there's generally more tension in these superficial muscles. So if we can work on right strengthening these deeper core muscles a lot of times right these muscles in through in through the neck region they'll start to let go uh, and and release and relax also i found that um, individuals that tend to complain about tension headaches or overuse of what's referred to as the suboccipital muscles in the back of the head here uh, a lot of times their positioning right which is this kind of forward head posture in a lot of cases the reason that they're actually in these positions is because they really haven't developed right these deeper neck flexor muscles and so they're not holding themselves in a very uh, efficient position so today what i'd like to do is show you the different strategies and progressions that i'll tend to use with patients uh, that present with weaknesses in these different areas okay so the first position that i'll tend to have patients start in is on their back, okay, uh, knees bent. You want to sort of start with your neck in more or less a neutral position, let's call it. And what I'll have the patient do to begin with is just start with some diaphragmatic breathing, right? So you want to uh, keep your tongue at the roof of your mouth while you're doing this, and you breathe in through your nose. And as you're breathing in through your nose, you're going to think about your belly button essentially protruding out, right? So you can actually place your hands uh, on your belly button and just gently push out against your hand. Okay, so this is the breathing technique we want to maintain while we're doing the exercise that I'll just show you. Um, so from there, again, you'll, you'll also want your tongue at the roof of your mouth when you do that. You're going to think about bringing your chin to essentially the midpoint of your neck. So it looks something like this. And as you're doing this, the key, right, is to make sure that the muscles in the front of the neck stay nice and relaxed and that we don't inadvertently raise the chin upwards, right? So we keep that chin tucked in while you're doing it. So a lot of times, right, if we're weak through here, there's going to be a tendency to want to lift, right, to basically go into a forward head type position because Again, a lot of people have been overusing these muscles in through the front, so they're very weak in doing this little chin nod movement, okay? So from there, um, there's different positions and progressions that we can work towards. 
So if we're just thinking in terms of the deep neck flexor muscles, from here eventually we'll have somebody keep the tongue, the, the chin tucked and maintain and do a little bit of a lift and then back down. Eventually we might even have a patient um, use a TheraBand, so some resistance while doing the lift. Some patients will start with a, a pillow so you're actually, instead of just lifting against gravity, you're actually, uh, you're, you're not lifting in that same direction. You've got a bit of support, which makes it, again, a little bit easier. So if you can imagine uh, like a pillow here and then lifting from there. So these would typically be progressions I would look at in terms of uh, this type of movement, right? So more of a flex type of, of movement. The other thing you want to work on are muscles and through that work on extension and also rotation, right, in terms of these deeper core muscles that we talked about. So when we're doing this, right, I'll actually have a patient on all fours now, okay, and then if we're doing, let's say, an extension type of movement, which is basically bringing the neck back, you'll have the patient start again in that tuck chin position, and then we're going to think about bringing that neck up and then coming out of that position. So I'm starting here, chin down, maintaining the chin down as I, as I bring my head upwards. Rotations again, you're going to think about first setting those core muscles, keeping that chin tucked in, and I'm rotating. Normally you'll, you'll get about 45 degrees when you're doing the rotations, but the whole key, right, with all of these is can I maintain that little chin tuck, right, while I'm doing my rotation, while I'm extending back, while I'm flexing forward. So really, again, if you think of it from the standpoint of I'm setting these muscles first, I'm trying to maintain while I'm doing these different directional movements. That's the key, right? That's what's going to allow these muscles here, the suboccipitals, the upper traps to start to let go. And you're going to feel as though you've got more stability and support in through the neck. And that's again why they can start to really release uh, and let go. The, the key with this is, or the way you'll know that you're compensating is when you get into these positions and let's say I'm trying to rotate and I Oh, my neck comes out of that position, right? Where I'm trying to extend or flex and my chin, right, comes forward. Then you know, hey, I'm overusing, I'm going back to my old habits, my old pattern. So it's a very subtle type of exercise. It's slow in terms of movement. The way I've shown it here is, is quite quick compared to how you'll want to do that at home. Um, so again, I hope that helps clarify the, pro the progressions, right, that you would do as well. So same sort of thing would apply in terms of the rotations and extensions, right? You could use eventually use a TheraBand or resistant band with those movements, um, just like I showed you when you were doing the flexion type of movement. If you have any specific questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment below. And please make sure to check with a physiotherapist to make sure that this uh, exercise is appropriate for you. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching. Take care.